what our rotations look like. Really interesting. I appreciate it. And on behalf of my colleague, Jackie Powell, um, her question is, I'm wondering if you have a word or phrase that sums up what the feeling in training camp has been and how you see that translating into the season to help the team accomplish your goals. I think there's just been a really good vibe in camp. You know, this, this is, this is a hard working group. I mean, it's the veterans set the tone every single day. There's a sense of urgency in everything that we do. You know, we don't want to waste time. We want to make sure we're efficient. We want to make sure we're effective. Um, but the energy level has been terrific. And, and I'm, I'm thankful for that. Um, certainly as a new coach, but it was exactly what I expected with the veterans that we have on this team. I mean, they're professionals. They understand what it's about. Uh, they want to come to work. They want to, they want to get better. Um, I think they're enjoying uh, a different, different perspective. I think they're enjoying a different vibe and a different pace in what we're doing every single day. Um, and, and so I think, I think energy is, is, uh, has been, has been the thing I would, I would, I would use as the word for us. Thanks coach. Appreciate you. Mm -hmm. Thanks, Howard. Dom, you're up. You're going to be followed by Ethan. Yeah, uh, good afternoon, Stephanie. Thank you uh, for doing this. Uh, good to see you. Uh, I wanted to ask you, I know, obviously, I know you're going to bring your style, put your stamp on, on the Connecticut Sun. But before you became, as you became interested in the job and learned more about the organization, what are some of the elements of the culture that Kurt left behind that you like and, and want to keep and, and, and maintain? Well, I think certainly, you know, Kurt is one of the most prepared coaches in, in the ballgame. This, this team was always prepared. This team always, you know, played tough. Um, defensively, they were one of the best teams in the league. And, and that's a tribute to his staff and, um, and, and the culture that was created here with him. You know, I also think that, um, you know, he, he's a great X's and O's coach. And so certainly positions that he put players in on the floor, uh, we're, we, 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 I was watching film. We were watching film. We were learning from that. You know, where are they most effective and what actions are they most effective? How can we utilize that and manipulate that into our system um, to, to, to give them some sort of um, comfortability in, in, in what we're doing and where they're continuing to get the basketball. Um, but look, this, this is a franchise that has withstood coaches that has withstood players. I mean, every, every time, you know, when Mike Tebow left, when Lindsey Whalen left, when Katie Douglas left, it's, it's like you, you never quite know what to expect, but this franchise has always been there. So I think that's attributed to the people in this organization, uh, how hard they work, how family friendly it, it is, um, you know, how, how this organization treats people and, 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 and players and staff and, and, and people in our business office who really want to be here. Uh, I just, the, the level of consistency with this franchise has been admirable. And of course, we want to continue that. Thank you, Coach. Thanks, Dom. Ethan, you are up. Hi, Coach. Uh, Ethan Arcado with the lead. Uh, Dewana didn't play in either of the preseason games, but what have you seen from her in practice that's impressed you so far? Uh, look, DB is is a pro. You know, she is vocal in her leadership. She's encouraging uh, to to our young players and to the players that are that are here. Um, she holds them to, to a level of, uh, of a standard and that level of accountability is, is huge. You know, her ability to, to, to stretch the floor as a, as a shooter, her versatility with her length and her athleticism, um, her veteran leadership with her experience. I mean, she's, she's been a part of championship teams. Um, she's played different roles on, on every team that she's been on. You know, she's, she's really a glue player, you know, for, for our franchise and for our team. And, I continue to lean on her for her leadership, for her insight, um, for her communication with our staff. And um, we look forward to, to her being back on the floor, uh, hopefully sooner rather than later. Thank you. All right. Thank you, Ethan. We're going to turn to Azar. Azar, you're up. You're going to be followed by Alexa. Hey, Coach. How's it going? Good. Thank you. Hey, I was, um, you, you talked about the piggyback off the comments you made. You, you spoke about how um, you know, this team has withstood everything and you've, you've witnessed this team, how good this team is from the outside looking in. And you talked about how you've seen them, you know, coming in, you've, they've held the level of expectation that, that you thought on a scale of one to 10, how, how from, from outside looking in, how have they held up, um, as far as when you were, you know, analyzing them as opposed to now you're coaching them? How it's a 10, up? you know, it's, it's exactly what I expected. You know, I, I think that, that when you watch the players on this team, um, and particularly, you know, the, the veteran returning players, when you think about Alyssa Thomas, 
Dewana Bonner, Brianna Jones, and and Natisha Heideman, it's like they they, they speak their own language, um, you know, and, and that they speak their own language on the floor, off the floor, uh, their standard of, of of excellence when they come to practice every day. Um, it doesn't matter what time we practice, where we practice. I mean, they they are committed to to being their best, and that raises the intensity level for everyone else. But I think you see that in how hard they play and compete day in and day out in a game. And so it's been um, it's been what I expected, which is which is nice because oftentimes it's not, um, you know. And I also appreciate their communication, you know, their transparency. Um, it, it's it's important for us to not have any surprises, to understand where they're coming from, and for them to understand where we're coming from. And so I appreciate that as well. Okay, thank you. All right, thanks, Azar. Uh, Alexa, you're up. You're going to be followed by Annie. Hey, Stephanie, great to see you and hope all's well. Um, I was just curious with um, Tiffany Hayes, what have you just seen from her, how she's approaching this season, given kind of what happened last year? And then obviously with the trade, she's starting a fresh year in Connecticut, but, um, you know, she's been such a, a great player in the league uh, since she's joined. So what have you just seen from her, either from like a mental approach or how she's really tried to settle in in Connecticut so far? I, I think Tiff has been terrific. You know, she fits in perfectly. Um, you know, she's a veteran who has tremendous experience, who who has played um, in a, a number of big games and a number of different roles, you know, from the time she was a rookie to now. Um, her ability to get downhill, to, to attack one-on-one, -on -one, to get to the rim, you know, we needed that. We needed somebody who could break down defenders, who could get to the rim, who could get to the foul line, who can also stretch the floor with a three-point shot. Uh, and I think that she's a she's a terrific defender as well, using her length, using her athleticism, um, and and we're challenging her to be a consistent rebounder because she's an outstanding rebounder from the perimeter position. You know, I, I think the the great thing about where Tiff can be in our system and with our team is that 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 she can be a piece. She doesn't have to shoulder the load. You know, she's playing with other great players. Um, you can see, as in our exhibition game against Atlanta, how explosive she can be when we need her to be, um, but she also doesn't have to do everything for our team. And I, and I think that that eases her mind. I hope that that eases her mind a little bit. Um, and hopefully we can continue to bring out the best in her. Thank you, appreciate it. Thanks, Alyssa. And Myers Drysdale, you're up. Hello, Stephanie. Hey, Ann, how are you? I'm good, I'm good, wishing you all the best. Thank um, you. Can you can you talk uh, break down Lauren Cox's game a little bit? Yeah, you know, the thing that intrigues us about Lauren is just for her size, her ability to stretch the floor. You know, we want to continue to find ways to, to open up the paint for AT and for for uh, Breezy and to be able to have somebody with her size that can defensively, you know, guard the fives in our league. But her ability to stretch the floor from the three point line to open up driving lanes and to open up the paint um, was big. You know, she's she was um, she hasn't been able to participate in a lot of practices yet, but we can still certainly see from what she's been able to do overseas and from what she's done since she's been here um, that that she can do that for us. Um, you know, now it's just getting her up to speed with with what we're running, with how we're doing things offensively, defensively um, and getting her some experience on the floor so we can figure out where she fits in our rotations. All right, thank you, Annie. Uh, before we jump to uh, Stacia and Akeem, I'm going to uh, add in a question here uh, delivered to me by Kareem Copeland of the Washington Post. Stephanie, you got to see the atmosphere of the NCAA tournament, Final Four, and entire collegiate season up close with your analyst duties. From your perspective, how does the league, the WNBA, capitalize and build off the interest from fans that may not have previously watched women's basketball and the W in general. That again from Kareem Coast, Kareem Copeland, Washington Post. Well, that, that's a good question. Uh, you know, so, some of that stuff is is outside my uh, my scope. But I but I do think that it's it's not just the league in general. I think it's each individual franchise. You know, the thing that I love. Um, being able to do is capitalize on the players that you've drafted is continuing from a social media standpoint to, to be to be active to be aggressive um, putting out you know blurbs about whether it's about practices whether it's about players you know consistently maintaining interest in those players that have come from college teams to the WNBA I mean oftentimes college fans support um, teams but they support teams because they're connected to players 
and we can grow that that our audience in the WNBA by continuing to showcase those players and continuing to to bring awareness to the teams that they're on. Um, you know, certainly we all wish that there were more jobs to be able to keep these players in the league, but but that's something that we're continuing to work on every single day. But I think, you know, the the, the social media, uh, digital media, and and from each individual franchise and continuing to to um, bring awareness to these players and these teams is is really important. All right. <clears throat> Excuse me. Thank you, Stephanie. We'll turn next to Stacia, and you'll be followed by Akeem. Stacia. Hello, Coach. Stacia Whitaker, ATP Sports. Um, I'm curious to know how your players have reacted to uh, the media's kind of emphasis on the super teams of, you know, Vegas and New York this year, because as you mentioned earlier, that this team is very tough, like Leah Brown coming in, she's got a toughness, she's got an edge. And we've seen that in the past, you know, years with Connecticut about how much they fight so hard. So has this been a motivating factor because of emphasis on other teams for you guys in camp, or are you just focused on yourselves and getting better? No, we're really just focused on ourselves. I mean, this is this is a team um, that's used to used to be in the underdog. I, I think the more motivation is, you know, hey, we were so close to winning a championship and we didn't get it done. Like that still sits sits pretty pretty heavy on their hearts and on their minds. Um, is we we got to find a way to get over the hump. So, um, you know, all we can control is what we can control here and getting better every single day, continuing to to mesh our our new players on the floor to build chemistry. Um, to put the best team that we can on the floor and, and we can control what we can control and, and, you know, all the outside noise, we'll let everybody else talk about that. All right. Thank you, coach. Good luck this season. Thank you. Thank you, Stacia. Akeem, uh, you're up. Yeah, I was just uh, wanting to, you know, get your, your thoughts on one particular issue. Um, you know, it seems as though that in recent years that the fortunes, I guess you could say, in terms of uh, women getting hired for head coaching positions has improved in the WNBA. I believe LA, Chicago, and Washington, correct me if I'm wrong, but I believe those are the three teams that still have uh, male head coaches. Just wanted to get your thoughts real quickly on, um, you know, just the, you know, the um, the landscape as far as, uh, as, far as uh, women coaches in the W. Well, it certainly looks different than when I was a player um, and when I was an assistant coach before and, and a head coach. And, you know, I think it's great. You know, what, what I'm what I'm really um, impressed by and encouraged by is that we're continuing now to to invest in, in former players in our league. You know, whether that's in the coaching realm, um, you know, in the front office, um, you know, no, no matter what that is, it's 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 continuing to invest in the women who have played in our league, giving them opportunities, um, you know, helping them find their way after basketball. I mean, there are so many players who played for me in Indiana or Chicago that I, that I look at and I think, oh my gosh, they would be great coaches. Um, and if there's any interest level, you certainly want to get them involved and get them experience. And then there's players that I look at that it's like, hey, they need to be the next GM or they need to be a next owner in our league. Or I hope in my lifetime or hope soon that we see the next commissioner was a former player in our league. I mean, just having the experiences um, that, that you have understanding the landscape of where we've been, where we are and where we want to go, um, understanding just, um, the evolution of the WNBA and then putting your own stamp on it, um, as a former player is something that, you know, I think many of us take great pride in and want to continue to cultivate within the WNBA. Thanks again, coach. All right, thank you, Akeem. Once again, a reminder to everybody, if you have a question for Coach Stephanie White, please use the raised hand function. And we'll give that about 10 seconds. All right, we're gonna to return to Howard Megdal. Howard, go ahead. Absolutely, Coach, and, and thank you for just this question as well. I wonder when you look at expectations for this team, obviously there's a lot of turnover. You're coming off of a finals appearance. Where do you set the bar and how did you go about kind of figuring out where that bar would be? I think anytime you've tasted the WNBA finals and being so close to a championship, your expectation is always, we want to win a championship. You know, I think that's the mindset that every team comes in with. We want to win a championship. Mm -hmm. uh, and, and as a new staff, it's, it's finding, you know, different ways uh, to give yourself an advantage day in and day out. You know, what can that be based on the team that you're playing, based on the matchup, based on rotations, 
you know, each year we have more information, whether it be uh, analytics or, or, or scout heavy stuff, or um, just, just, you know, the eye test each year we have, we have more information. How do we best use that information in an efficient manner to put the best team on the floor, to put our players in positions to be successful and to be their best. Um, that's our challenge as coaches, um, you know, and, and it's, it's not the challenge of, you know, the first time that we play a team always, it's, it's the challenge of managing it and getting the best out of your team throughout the entire season. And then in the playoffs, you know, being the best for a majority of the time, being able to win a playoff series. So, you know, for us, um, it's going to be about, you know, the process of continuing to get better every single day, um, continuing to put ourselves in position to, to win ball games, um, and continuing to, as coaches, make, make quick enough adjustments, um, you know, find, find small advantages that we can have within the game, small advantage we can have game to game, day to day, um, and, and manipulate those things in the best way possible to give us an opportunity for success. Now, we can't think so much about October that we forget what's happening in, in May and June. Um, but that's certainly our goal. Appreciate it. Thank you very much. All right. Thank you, Howard. <clears throat> Excuse me. We're going to turn to Tarika. Tarika, you're going to be followed by Dom and Azar. Dom, I'm sorry, Tarika. Hey, Coach. How are you? Hey, um, good. How are you? Good. I, I know that, um, and apologies for being late, so you may have touched on this, and if so, I apologize, but I know, you know, roster cuts are extremely difficult, especially um, when you are new to a team and really trying to figure out and find out what balance is where. Um, can you speak a little bit about um, why some of the cuts were made that you, what you saw in certain players, specifically Nia Cloudin um, and Alexis Morris, if there were just certain things that you were looking for um, that those players just didn't provide at this time, if it was strategy, if it was more so just towards other needs for the team, if you could just kind of speak to those, um, to those cuts and some of those cuts specifically. I think it's a combination of things, you know, certainly we have a lot of new pieces. Um, so, so how do the, how do some of these pieces complement one another? Um, you know, how can we, um, how do we retain information from one day to the next, you know, for all new players in the league, for all rookies, it's a lot. I mean, there are so many things and it's, it's not just, you know, defensive execution and schemes and, and being able to execute those time and time again, it's how quickly can you catch on to all of that? How quickly can you catch on? offensively you know if you're used to being in a system that is very structured and runs one thing at a time it's hard to adjust in WNBA uh, when, when there's multiple actions every time you come down the floor on both ends of the floor um, so it's a lot to absorb and unfortunately they have to do it in a quick period of time so you know I, I look at at our cuts that we've had to make some of it is because players just aren't ready and they need experience um, you know and, and you certainly want to keep an eye on those players some of it's retention execution and being being um being able to to do that consistently because we don't have time to go backwards um and and some of it's just pieces that that, that need to fit um and complement what we already have and the identity of this team so there's probably not just one thing or one or two things it's really a combination of things and you're right this is the hardest part of the job whether you're a new coach, whether you're an old coach it doesn't matter this is the hardest part of the job because as a former player in this league, I want these players to continue to have these opportunities. Um, you know, I want this, I want to be able to see the players that we know have potential and we can develop. I want them to have jobs so we can develop them. It's just, unfortunately, the realities of, of where we are. Thank you so much, coach. Thanks, Tarika. Dom, you're up. Is our, you next. Yeah, coach, I just want to ask you, what uh, in your mind is the identity or the signature that you want your team to establish, uh, let's say once once your your program is kind of settled in, what what do you want the team to be known for, and what gives you the most optimism? What are the things that give you optimism that you're going to be able to do that? Um, well, first and foremost, I don't think it needs to be any different. I mean, this is a team that has been known as being a hard nosed, you know, tough competitive team that you just you don't want to play the physicality level of physicality, the level of execution. Um, you know, we're, we're going to get in people defensively. They're not going to get exactly what they want. We're going to make it tough on them. So that doesn't need to change. That has been successful and it's going to continue to be successful. Um, you know, certainly it, the optimism is when, when you see the, the, the veterans on this team come to play every day. I mean, they change the, the pace of the game. 
They change the intensity of the game. They start the game really well with, with those kinds of things. The challenge is for us to figure out rotation wise, how we don't lose any of that. Um, you know, this is, this is, this is a good, tough, hard nosed competitive group, you know, certainly walking into a situation where there's not a lot of tweaking that needs to be made in terms of identity. What we want to do is try to make life a little bit easier for them on the offensive end of the floor while maintaining that defensive identity, be a little bit harder to guard, um, give them a little bit more freedom, get a little bit more high percentage looks consistently and multiple times within our offense and be a little bit tougher to guard. Thank you, coach. Thanks, Tom. Azar, you're up. You're going to be followed by Blake. Azar, go ahead. Hey, coach. I was just wondering, um, you you came from Indiana before, if, if, for people that don't know, um, with, the, with the fever. Um, how do you, what did you take from that experience? to bring over here or what would you, what are you going to do um, differently from when you were coaching Indiana from last time when you uh, as opposed to coming in this, this season with the team? I think you take just, I mean, every year that you're a coach, you, you take certain things from it. I, I think communication is number one, first and foremost, um, you know, making sure that we're, we're over communicating, making sure that there's two way communication, um, getting, getting feedback from players, um, you know, whether that's on the floor, off the floor, it doesn't matter. You know, they're out there playing the game. We're just on the sidelines. So uh, what do you see? You know, how do you feel about it? Um, you know, and, and making sure that they understand where we're coming from in terms of what we see and how we feel about things. Um, you know, it's it's a it's a they're a different set of players. You know, it's a it's a different time in the league, too. So I think, you know, for me to continue to to learn our team, um, to continue to invest in building relationships with our players, um, to continue to, to learn how to put them in situations to be successful, um, to find and think outside the box um, in terms, it's a long season, um, but it's a quick and short season in terms of adjustments and different things that we can do to, to make, um, make our team successful on the floor. Thank you. All right, thank you, Azar. Blake, you're up. Hey again, coach. Um, so we had Kurt on here earlier and he mentioned your roster as stacked and that he definitely considers your group as contenders. So not to put you on the spot, but what does it mean to you to hear that from the organization's previous coach? I mean, it means a lot. Kurt knows this, this team inside and out. You know, he was here for a long time and he did such an outstanding job with this group. And um, he knows he knows what they're about. You know, he knows their mindsets, you know, he knows their strengths and um, and he knows and understands, you know, what this group is capable of accomplishing because he saw it every day. Um, you know, so it certainly means a lot. Um, you know, we start, we know that we have a different team and that we have different pieces and that we have to continue to find ways to to gain advantages, um, you know, every single day and put ourselves in positions to be successful. Um, you know, we we. We don't necessarily, it doesn't really matter for us if we're talked about right now and to be in, in championship contention, you know, we want to be talked about in championship contention in September and October. Um, and so we're, we're going to work for that. Thank you, coach. Thank you. All right. Thanks everybody for joining us. Coach, thank you so much for your time. Good luck when we open up this Friday night. We'll see you during the season. Thanks, Stephanie. Thank you. Appreciate it, Ron. To our media, stick with us. We're going to be joined in a moment by Noel Quinn from 1.30 to 2 o'clock. Then we're going to have a quick break. At 2.30, we'll be rejoined by Coach Cheryl Reeve. And at 3, we'll wrap up the day with Latricia Trammell. Sit tight, everybody. We'll have Noel Quinn in a moment.
All right, everybody. Thanks for sticking with us. And Coach Noel Quinn has joined us. Thanks, Noe, for being here and giving us your time. We're going to jump right in with questions and answers for you. So to our media, if you would, please use the raised hand function. We'll get started right away with Noe. All right, we're going to begin first with Akeem. Akeem, go ahead. I I I muted myself for a, for a quick sec, but um, but yeah, thanks for joining us and best of luck this season. Uh, I just wanted to get your thoughts on um a couple of things. Uh, first of all, um, you know, losing Sue to retirement and of course losing Stewie, those are two big um big losses. Who do you see on your team with your current roster, kind of maybe filling those roles? And also, you know, you're one of the younger you know head coaches in in all of basketball, younger than even some active players. What would you say has been like the biggest uh, lesson that you have learned um, as a uh, as a young head coach? Uh, well, first, um, you know, those shoes won't be filled at all. Those are generational talents. And so <clears throat> what we're looking at is our group um, being the best version of them best versions of themselves, um, starting with our pillar of Ju Jewel Lloyd um, in a different role this year, stepping up into a leadership role, but also, um, you know, has been here before, been here the longest, um, and I'm going to rely on her to be an anchor in that way. I think Ezzy Magmugor is prime for a good year. Um, Mercedes is back. Um, bringing Sammy Whitcomb back and and having Kia Nurse on our roster for some vet, some vet leadership. Um, we're just going to rely on, um, you know, leadership by committee. Um, I'm super impressed by, you know, the work ethic of this group, the energy of this group. Um, and we, we've had a very good camp. So I've seen some good stuff and I'm trusting, you know, um, Jewel to anchor us there. Um, and as far as me, you know, a lot of my experience has come from playing the game at a high level for a long time as well. Um, I, I don't think that should be negated in that. Um, and from, you know, coaching and playing alongside too, I've learned a ton. Um, and just from uh, being around the W for such a long time, um, that is aided in my my experience as well. Um, being, being under Dan Hughes and being alongside Klopp, uh, I learned I, I learned valuable lessons in that. And so every day is a learning experience for me, just taking it in. Um, but I feel like I'm in uh, in a good spot of experience and, and confidence in what I'm doing. Thanks. All right. Thank you, Akeem. And we're going to turn next to Alexa. Alexa, you're going to be followed by Miles, Jerika, and Ethan. Alexa. Hey, Noel. Oh, hi. Great to see you and hope you're doing well. Um, I was just curious, going off the point you just made about Jewel, what have your conversations over the off season, but even during training camp been like to, um, with her in regards to assuming a bigger leadership role on and off the court, whether or not that's changing, not even changing, but like, you know, yeah. um, taking on a more enhanced leadership role, maybe being more vocal, what that looks like on the court as well. Yeah, I think Jula has done a great job. Um, she's in such a positive pocket right now of um, understanding what this season means uh, for her and our and our organization. Um, she's, you know, I don't want to take away what Jewel does best on the floor. And so part of the leadership role will come from the coaching staff. I don't want to put it all on her. It will come from the vets that are here um, because I think Jewel is, is, is at her best when she's thinking thinking less and playing free. Um, but she stepped into in this role knowing that, again, she's the longest storm tenured player right now um, and um, understanding what, you know, the, what it looks like to be a vet um, as it relates to the rookies and um, the newness of, you know, um, having people here who haven't been here and making sure she, um, you know, has uh, our culture intact um, and shows that every day through her work ethic. Um, she showed up in great shape, um, not just physically, but mentally. Um, and in the off season, we connected so much about just, you know, what this season means um, to her and, and how we want to approach it. And she's coming with a sharp mindset um, and she's being a great example to everyone every single day. Thank you. Appreciate it. All right. Thank you, Alexa. Miles, you're up. Tariqa, you're next. Miles. 
Hey, Noel. Uh, thanks for doing this. Just wondering, I uh, want to ask about Kia. How, how much of a relationship, how much of a role did your relationship with Canada basketball play in, in bringing her to Seattle? And, and what are you expecting from her this year after a year out of the W? Yeah, I mean, I think the biggest thing was seeing her at that international level, but just learning who she was um, and how she thought the game. And it was refreshing to see that she's so coachable um, and she has a passion for the game and she has such a high IQ. And so um, having that experience with her, you know, allowed me to come back to our staff and to Talisa and say um, what this type of player is um, outside of, you know, what we know her to be. When she played against us, she always torched us. <laughs> so we know um, she was working back from injury, but those those times I got to see her with Canada, I saw her improvement every single day and the way she worked and how she was with her teammates. So to be in that um, environment with her um, was very helpful in, in knowing and, and learning who she was as a person. And what, what kind of role do you expect her to play with the team now going forward? Yeah, I, I know I've, I've challenged Kia to, um, you know, play on both sides of the ball. Um, and so there'll be times when she's on the court and she's having to defend other top perimeter players. Um, offensively, she can shoot the ball, um, the three ball, um, partic in particular, super, very good. And so um, I'm relying on her to just be a knockdown shooter, a consistent three-point threat. Um, also, Kia is a very good passer um, and creator. And I think, um, you know, that's something that we kind of miss. I'm um, someone who can um, get to the free throw line, um, but also understand how to move the ball and create for others. Thank you. Thank you, Miles. Tariqa, you're next. Ethan, on deck. Hey, Coach. Um, one thing that I think can be said, um, and correct me if I'm wrong, is that when you do lose players with the cal of the caliber of a Brianna Stewart and a Sue Bird, it kind of leaves room for new faces to come and grow. Um, and I look at someone like Jordan Horston, who you guys selected in the ninth um, with the ninth pick, as someone who really very humble, really wants to learn, really wants to grow and has a lot of opportunities ahead of her. Can you just speak a little bit about how she has really embraced her new role, um, what it's been like to work with her and what do you expect to see from her if she's able to, to maintain a spot on the roster? Yeah, um, Jordan has been great. Um, from day one before camp, when I connected with her, she expressed how important it is to have a good relationship with her coach, um, to know that we care, um, because then she'll go through a wall for us. And you love to hear that from a young athlete, um, because, you know, you 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 watch her uh, for her whole entire college career. And you just don't know um, what type of pro she is or what would like to be. Um, she also expressed this is her dream to be in the WNBA. And from that vantage point, um, she's shown that every single day in the way she works, um, even, you know, connecting with Jewel, asking questions. Um, you tell her one thing and she fixes it immediately. And if, you know, she doesn't correct it, she'll correct it herself. And so I think you're right. It allows space for athletes who um, either maybe have been playing overseas or, you know, have worked on their craft um, to, to have an opportunity this year to showcase their talent and um, to solidify their spot in this league. And I think Jordan, um, the, just with the um, intentionality behind her work every single day has an opportunity to really make an impact on this team and in this league. She's so versatile. She's super athletic. She jumps out the gym, but also she understands the game at a high level. And um, because of the versatility, I'm trying to find, I mean, there are so many positions that she can play. I want her to be great at one or multiple or couple um, and not kind of overtax her, um, but she's taking it in stride. She's learning every single day. And I'm super excited about um, her journey and the opportunity to showcase her talent on this stage. Thanks coach. All right, Ethan, you're up. Annie, you're on deck. Uh, hi coach, Ethan Arcada with the lead. As he was one of the best defenders in the league last year, just how important is she to your team on defense and as well as offense? 
as he is extremely important um, for our team. Um, I've also challenged Ezzy to, you know, be ready to give a little bit more offensively, but she's come in in great shape. Her experience overseas in, in, in EuroLeague playing in Hungary, she's learned the game. Um, she's very comfortable. She put on a little bit of muscle, but, you know, her athleticism, her pace, her speed is improved in a positive way. And so, defensively that's going to be where we hang our hat on and she will anchor that and I've expressed that to her uh, with her shot blocking ability with her defensive instincts with her ability to go alter plays and rebound I think that's where it starts but also what Ezzy has um, and what we want to hone in on is her offensive skill set her ability to take players off the dribble she's worked on her ball handling um, her ability to just get out and transition handle the ball or even finish at the rim. So um, she's going to, we're going to lean on her a lot um, to, to anchor us uh, in, in a lot of ways, not just on that end of the floor. Thank you. Thanks, Ethan. Uh, Ann Myers Drysdale, you're up. Andy Lipton on deck. Hey, Noe. Hey, Annie. <laughs> Good to talk with you. Nice to talk to you. <laughs> Um, two questions. One, can you uh, elaborate what it means to have Mercedes Russell's back and what she's going to contribute? And then I'll ask the second question after. Okay. Yeah, Mercedes, um, we missed her tremendously last season and it showed um, just, you know, her presence in the inside, but also what Mercedes is, is a, to me, she's, uh, uh, has point guard qualities in a, in a post body. So she's a, she can, she's an excellent passer. She sees the game and reads the game at a high level. And um you know, just, you know, her calmness and her poise at that position. So this year, um, you know, it's good to have her back on the floor. She's still rounding herself into shape, having not played an entire season. But um, it's just for me to have comfort in knowing that we have another person on the floor who at that post position, which is not always um, um happening uh can control like what we do on the floor and make sure everyone is in their correct spot so Sadie has also worked on extending her game um shooting 15 70 foot 17 footers consistently working on her three ball so um, I, I'm excited to to for her to showcase um how she's improved as well and then also um because with Sue gone and I know Jewel handles the ball quite a bit but who do you see in that backcourt really kind of setting everybody up and and uh, starting the offense. Yeah, it's a fluid situation, honestly, and that's what camp has been for us. Um, trying to find, you know, players that can fit those roles um, as best as possible. At you know, to start the year, Annie, I think um, it could, it's going to be by committee. Um, Bonnie Turner has has been great in camp. Um, Jade Melbourne has been great. Ivana Doikic, um just showed up a, a few days ago and has showed very good point guard qualities. And so um, if it's not those three to, to lead in that position, we also have Kia Nurse who can initiate. You know, Sammy has played a little bit of point in our league and our players are versatile enough, versatile enough to, to, to not only rely on one person, um, but the offense that we want to run, um, anyone can can begin it. And obviously we understand at different points in the game, you need your point guard to settle down, to have poise and to set people up. So uh, we're still still evaluating, but we like where we, we, we're we landing with um, those three. Okay, thanks so much and good luck this season. Thank you. Thanks, Andy. Andy, you are up. And right. Stacia on deck. Andy, go ahead. Thanks, Ron. Hey, Noel, how are you today? Well, how are you? Good. Um, has anyone far exceeded expectations so far in training camp? And if so, how so? Yeah, I mean, if you think about the training camp that we have, um, this is kind of the first time in a long time where we actually have a lot of spots open. And from that from that standpoint, camp has been super competitive, but it's not, it's interesting. Our group had had chemistry day one, so they're helping one another. And in that, um, I think Dulcie has shown um, to, you know, have the power and um, the, the, the mind, the, the high IQ to play in this league. Um, she can rebound the heck out of the basketball. She averaged a double double in college, which is difficult to do. But also what's very impressive with her is just every day how she's grown and gotten better. Um, you tell her one thing in one moment and she corrects it. And um, she's able to play in a free-flowing um, pro offense, which has been really good to see. 
Um, and the other, I would say, um, you know, we talked about Jordan. It's not really a surprise, but it's good to just see her in person and see, you know, how athletic she is. She's she's touching the rim at every rebound, um, but also her mind for the game is is high and and I love that about her. Um, and the last I'll say would be Jade Melbourne. Um, to be so young, um, she has that Aussie toughness and she has a poise about her, um, and just a a you know, a mind for basketball, but also a physicality about her and a confidence about her that um, you wouldn't see in a young player um, at that point guard position to to take ownership, to lead, to get us in the position to be successful. So she's done a good job. Thanks so much, Noel, and, and best of luck this season. Thank you. Uh, thanks, Andy. Stacia, you're up. Hello, Coach. Stacia Whitaker, ATP Sports. Uh, I'm You've talked about Ezzy being um, being a good player and coming back and seeing what she's going to do this year and happy with Mercedes, but Sammy Whitcomb is back, and then you have Plaisance here. So you have multiple players that have won championships, and we just got off talking with, um, with Stephanie White from Connecticut and how they were so close. How much does that championship pedigree from your players that you've gotten back in, like with Sammy and Mercedes, and then gotten Plaisance, help with this new era of the team you know post Sue yeah it helps a lot obviously just from the first and foremost with culture um you know in this league it's hard to win and it's hard to win championships um but you know those players know how it feels like every single day um you can't take a day off can't take it for granted um you know you get your work on on the court and also that chemistry that needs to happen off the court um having Sammy back has been a breath of fresh air because she's been here I played with her and obviously um you know we 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 know each other in that capacity but she's still at the point where she's she wants to learn and continue to grow and um I think to have someone who's has has won in this league but also the work ethic and the mind that she continues to show you know to the younger players about you know how it's a constant um growth process I think that's been huge and obviously having TP here having just won a championship last year again you know how it feels every single day and to lay those foundational blocks of you know how we uh, want to work every day you know how how um you 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 build that culture with those foundational blocks and those pieces to physically see it, um, to set the example and show it for the younger players. It's 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 so big for us. Just a quick follow up on that because you talked about Sammy. How have you seen her grow since becoming a mother too? Yeah, we talked about that actually. Um, you know, she's calmed down a bit, and it's. Um, in the in the way of you know Sammy is to me the the hardest worker I've ever been around she would be lathered up before practice because she's had an intense workout um in a pre-practice and then after practice she's has another workout and I'm like is this sustainable (laughs) and she showed that it it was but now as a mom, I can see some some of those workouts are tailored down because now she's going to go home to Nash, you know, and she's a mom and she has to, she wants to spend time with her son. And I think um, that has kind of given her uh, work-life balance a bit, which is at this stage of her career. Probably <laughs> um, so that, that she's not um, overtaxing herself. Thank you, Coach. Best of luck this season. <laughs> All right, thanks. We're going to turn to Aristides, and you're going to be followed by Miles and Kevin. Aristides. Hello. Thank you very much. Uh, first of all, I wish all the best, Coach, uh, for the new season. Above all, health and success. Greetings from Greece. I will ask you something more general. Your team last year had high percentage in, in both defense and attack. Your team was uh, second in offensive rating and fifth in defensive rating. According to the statistics, what would you like to keep from last season? What do you want to change the most? Yeah, I think um, one, of, one of our deficiencies, a couple of our deficiencies defensively was rebounding and keeping um, teams out of the paint. So from a defensive standpoint, I think um, we need to shore up our defense, um, our rebounding, and also, you know, at, at, at the base of what that means um keeping people out the paint is just guarding your yard um being on a string having better um presence as it relates to 
to our defensive principles. Um, offensively, uh, our deficiency was getting to the free throw line. Obviously, we shot the three ball a lot and we shot it at a high clip. Um, we shared the ball a lot and had low turnovers. I would love to keep that. Um, in our last, you know, scrimmage against LA, we had high turnovers, but we're still in the mix of the game because we rebounded decently. Um, so I think, you know, offensively continuing to keep our pace, pace playing poised, um, but also getting um, enough shots on goal to stay in games. And if we could shoot the three at a, at a decent percentage, I think um, that'd help us as well. Thanks, Coach. I wish you all the best. Thank you. Uh, thank you. And uh, we're going next to Miles. Miles will be followed by Kevin. Hey again, Noel. Um, thanks for taking the time. Um, Becky Hammond's name has obviously been linked to uh, some NBA job openings. Just from your perspective, like how how would you weigh or how would you consider sort of staying in the W and helping grow this league versus making history? Yeah, I mean, it's a it's just kind of, you know, case by case or, you know, what you know, any individual feels like. I think it's amazing that Becky is always in the mix of um, uh, the the coaching uh, availability or jobs in the NBA. Just so it speaks to, you know, her work ethic, um, you know, the fact that they understand and know that she's more than capable. I love that for us as women, as coaches, and the representation matters there. Um, at, and, and also, you know, on the flip side of that, I do think it's important to have women coaches and coaches in women's basketball to continue to grow our game. So whether it's taking from the NBA and bringing back that knowledge and making sure we're growing our game at a high level. Um, I love that as well, um, to have an opportunity to lead, you know, women in in a direction of, um, you know, change. And, you know, we're, it's not just what we do on the court, but off the court. I think that's that that to me um, is where. My passion lies um, just because of, you know, um, that's what I value. So kudos to Becky for even always being in the mix with the NBA and, and representing us all. Um, but also I love to continue. I love where we're at, at, at in women's basketball and I want us to continue to grow and get better and um, and 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 make sure we're in the upper echelon of, of leagues in the world. Appreciate the answer. Good luck this season. Thank you. Thank you, Miles. Kevin, go ahead. Hey, Noe, just curious real quick if you'd heard anything more on Gabby Williams' status since yeah. yesterday. Yeah, great question. Um, I have a meeting in about an hour and a half, and so I, I will then. So, so nothing up to this point yet. Okay, thanks. Thanks. All right, uh, next question, Rafiq. Go ahead slowly, please. Rafiq. This is Rafiq with nothing but that sports talk. Um, I just want to know, like, with all the offseason changes and the training camp that you guys have, like, what – what is what do you what can you tell you about the direction that the Seattle Storms looking to move move towards going into this upcoming season? Yeah, you know we're shifting, we're shifting our mindset, we're reimagining what you know what this team looks like and what we can be. Um, with saying that, I think that our energy level has been amazing every single day. Um, I talked about the chemistry of this team; it's very unique. Um, that you know they get along, they're helping one another, and it's organic. And um, because of that, every single day, we as coaches haven't had to coach um, effort, you know, or those intangibles, um, working hard, or they naturally come in and have um, an aura about themselves that they understand what this is for them, the opportunity that they have, you know, as individuals making impact um, on this team, but also as an organization, what this means. So, I mean, I've, I've enjoyed camp since day one because of that. And I'm super impressed um, with the people that we've brought in. Appreciate the insight, good luck. Thank you. All right, thank you, Rafi. Uh, just a reminder, if you have a question, please use the raised hand function. We'll give it about 10 seconds. All right. No, we were going to let you go. Thank you so much for your time. Thanks, Thanks Ron. of course, to, to Jeff Hoffman for getting you there on time. <laughs> we appreciate you both. Noe, good luck. Jeff, good luck as we start off the season in a couple of days. Thanks, to Ron. Our media, stay with us. We have a brief break. We're going to be back at 2.30 with Coach Cheryl Reeve at 3 p.m. with Latricia Trammell. <laughs> Excuse me. Coach Reeve and Latricia. 
will be the last of our two coaches today. See everybody at 2.30.